Hello, I'm uh, Mike Daikobara. I'm here right now at Sherry's uh, demo. She had just started. Um, so I'm going to uh, go close and uh, start seeing what, uh, take a look at what she's doing. along here I'll, I'll be able to take that yellow and I'm gonna make a green by mixing in some of that blue and look what a beautiful um, pale green that I can get that kind of echoes that foliage so behind the branches I'm gonna come in and put in some of that color and I kind of like when there's a mix of foliage and sky together like this so I like to leave that, that edge wet like especially for diff for um, distant foliage I don't want to have a hard line you know it's really hard to see exactly where the foliage ends and where the sky begins so I'm just happy that that kind of blended together by using some of those wet edges there do you think I can paint a whole scene in, in 30 minutes <laughs> This will be my challenge for today. <laughs> and talk at the same time. And talk yeah. at the same time. That's why I drew it in advance, because I don't think there would be a way to draw, talk, and paint in 30 minutes. But let's see. Now, you also notice that when I'm working, I work with the biggest shapes first. So I took, and I usually start at the top. So I'm starting with um, the biggest shapes, which are that big, uh, soft area of foliage. And then I'm going to come down. I'm going to paint around that beautiful awning because I want to leave that white. So I'm going to paint around that. And um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is after I put that color down, I just kind of leave it because I want it to be, I might come in and do darker branches after, but I really just want to leave it dry. Because in watercolor, when you go back into things and they're semi-dry, that's when you get into trouble. So I'm just leaving, you know, I, I might come in with a little bit, just a little bit of foliage up at the top. It's hard to do that in Valencia because it gets dry. It's dry. We're lucky because it's the end of the day. So we have the, <laughs> we have the luxury of slower drying time and I'm not in full sight. Um, okay, so I stepped back a little bit so I could talk this into is, uh, uh, this, is this uh, live stream. Um, yeah, if anyone has um, any... Uh, questions or anything you'd like me to do uh, I can't really talk with anyone because she's talking through the demo but uh, yeah let me know and I'll try to capture that scene uh, but I will swing around and we'll start seeing what she's doing that green that's on the fence you see that green and there's some shadow so that I'm going to paint in two layers all these little shapes of foliage because they're going to come back and I'm going to have purer color in them after. And there's a little sign there, a little red sign. So that's going to, I always look for opportunity to put pure color in. So that little red sign is a good opportunity hey, for I pure just color. just had a uh, question. Sure. Uh, is that a Cora Post uh, mounting? I just got a question from... Uh... Uh, on the back, that's uh, my yeah. that, that's my plein air, uh, plein air Eric Michaels plein air on plein air pro easel. Oh, okay. So I'm just painting right in a sketchbook, and that's okay. my travel easel mm. that I've been uh, carrying around all day. Uh, all right, thank you. Sure. Are there actually, questions on that? Yeah, people wow. type comments and questions. Cool. And, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Okay, so this is the same, but as I'm going across. I'm Hey, no problem, Jade. Uh, this place right here is, uh, it's right across the street from the Congress Hotel. Um, I think it's called Congress uh, Plaza. It, we were supposed to be in the north side, but we're more on the south side, so yeah. If you're nearby, come on by. I 
could get bright colors, I could get dark colors, and I can get this beautiful neutral. You see that? Mm -hmm. And it's a neutral that doesn't come out of a tube, it's a mixed neutral. So as it starts to separate out, you get little <laughs> echoes of blue, you get echoes of the red, and a little bit of the yellow. And I'll bring that down into the foliage. Um, at the same time, because I have this red on my palette, um, I'm going to make use of it by uh, painting uh, that sort of pinkish sandy ground that's here. Okay, that's on, that starts kind of under the bench and goes around. And as I do it, I might put a little more yellow into it. So any opportunity that I have where I can vary the mix, that makes me happy, you know? And let a little air in at the bottom of the sketch too. Like you don't really have to paint right to the edge. So I like to let a little did you air in. Did that with the three colors and a little bit more of red, no? Yeah, I added, yeah. Like I, I use the mixes that are left over in here. So I just, you, I, I put the three colors out and now as I'm mixing, I'm just making different colors always from those three. So, you know, if you used a gray out of the tube, it wouldn't be as nice as mixing a neutral color that's either a warm neutral or a cool neutral. And this is kind of a warmish neutral that I mixed from those grays. And it's the same, now I'm gonna take that neutral color and I'm gonna add a bit more blue to it. And that's gonna be, uh, there's kind of a dumpster back there. And people who follow my blog know that I like to paint garbage cans. <laughs> so um, there's, if there's a dumpster in there, it's gonna be a <laughs> and, and that's also gonna be an opportunity for shadow in the Underpainted, meaning painting a little lighter than I would normally so that I can put the shadow in Hi, so I stepped back to be able to talk a little bit. Uh, for people that checked in now, we're live streaming Sherry's uh, demo right now. She's using three uh, colors, limited colors, and uh, she's capturing the scene right now. Uh, if anyone has any questions or, or uh, comments or actually more questions, um, I'll try to see if I could ask her. Uh, she's talking uh, through the demo quite a lot, so I won't be able to ask too much, but um, um, let me know. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do on dry. I only do shadows first if it's on a white surface. And this, I want to have a little color in here, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that yet. So when I have that, this neutral here, um, this kind of warm neutral, I'm also gonna do, because I want to show that on that awning there's a change of plane, meaning it comes like this, like at an angle, and then down. So before I do the shadow on there, and this is not the shadow, I'm just going to paint a little bit of uh, gray on there to show where that comes down. And then I'm going to come back and do, do the shadow. So while that's drying, I can't do the dark. I can't do the darks in here. I want to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to do some of the things that are in the foreground. Um, so what are the things that are in the foreground? Well, we have a really bright green. I'll just clean the palette a little bit. So just clean this because I want to put some brighter colors in here. So now I want to make there's, there's a fantastic uh, variety of colors in the foliage. So it's a bright, very bright green. So I'm going to, I'm going to take that. No, no, I'm good. Yeah. Just, if you could open that so I have a place to put This Windsor and Newton yellow is more uh, lemon it's than more, cadmium. Yeah, it's more lemon than cadmium. It is. So here's the brightest kind of green that I can get. And I'm going to use that for this foliage here. And there's sort of different groupings of foliage. And so I'm going to just put them in like that, really sort of quick shapes. And then I'm gonna see, now yesterday when I drew this, uh, this sort of big shape that came up, this uh, bamboo-ish looking thing, uh, it was in sun, so it was quite a bit lighter. So I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna make it just a little bit lighter in here. Put that all the way through. And then I wanna make a different kind of green, the foliage so this time I'm gonna put I'm gonna make a more blue green and to dull it a little bit like I see it's sort of grayish green in the front 
I'm going to take the complementary on the color wheel, which is red, a tiny bit of that red, and I'm going to put that in, and that will give me a, um, it's sort of a balancing act, but it'll give me a gray that's a little bit greener. And I'm going to use that for the foliage that's in the front here. And you can see I'm leaving some shapes in there for other kinds of things, for flowers and brighter kinds of uh, foliage. And as it, as it comes around to the front and it's under other things, it gets a little darker, so I'm going to put a little dark under here. Blue now? Blue. Blue. There's blue. There's more blue in there. But still the same three colors. So you can see the great variety that, that I've already gotten just from those three, like a lot of variety in the greens. And uh, now I'm going to start to, I'm going to make a dark. So there's this big sort of uh, shrub, roundish, uh, cedary thing. Oh, something evergreen. The you. The you. That's it. I have those in my garden. I, I should have known. The new growth. I have you. I have you in my garden. So this time I'm going to make, I'm going to add a little more color. A little more blue. And I'm using less water. So I'm not dipping as much into the water. And I'm going to leave some little spaces, little uh, add little bits of yellow in there too. Just those those little bright ends of the U. So I'll put that in, and I'm still leaving some spaces for color because I want to come back in and do pure color in the flowers after. So this is a much, this, the, here the paint is much thicker, because I want to get those dark colors. Much thicker. And I'm kind of painting all over the place, because I'm speed painting. Um, so let's see if there's another big section. I think this is dry enough now that I can go back in and do the darks that are in there. And, oh, I forgot one little piece of bright green, which is behind the bench. I try to get as much variety in these greens as I can. Um, and now that I have that green on my brush, I'm going to come in and uh, put some darker areas into the foliage too. So I can start to build up a little bit in the foliage. So you I, I don't usually work this quickly. And I don't usually work all over the place, but I am con trying to be conscious of the time, so. And then I'll get some real darks in those branches, but I just wanted to get a little bit more foliage, a little darkness in the foliage like that. Okay, so the thing that really makes it stand out is when you put in the real dark darks. And the darkest dark is in here, and that's in the, um, all right, so I'm stepping back to be able to talk into the camera because I don't want to disturb her giving the demo right now. But uh, yeah, for those that checked in now, this is Mike Daikobara. I'm here at Sherry's workshop, our demo. Uh, she's using three colors and she's trying to, she's capturing the scene here. Uh, so I have a question here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so she said uh, in order to be, uh, uh, because of the limited time she has for this demo, she uh, drew this uh, ahead of time and she started the painting um, right now uh, well about uh, 20 well, about 15 minutes ago she started so and I, I, uh, yeah I this the easel colors. she has uh, is this morning. so they're soft yeah in. I like that's um, that's the way to get the dark darks is really to have fresh paint because if you have dried pan paints and you have to add a lot of water to reconstitute them you're 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 uh, diluting your color so that is the manufacturer okay. so so we'll start from one side and go to the other side. Uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, uh, let me know. There was, there's and, uh, green I'll try to see if I could, uh, if I could capture it. Right so you see, I like to put in, I like to make the darks a little bit warm. So they're kind of red. And I want to leave that white support in there. And I like that the sign that says order here. So I'm going to paint around that. And this is a great opportunity to put color in. So there were some little lights in there also, like the, there's a little light bulb in there. I'm gonna paint around that light and I'll probably come back and put some yellow in there. But often in, in, when you're looking into interior spaces, you see warmth. So as I'm doing that dark, I'm varying that dark color 
but I'm trying to keep it a little warmer. And it also is a complement to all the green that's around it. Having that red is a complement to all that. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing more paint, but I'm not putting my, my uh, brush in the water. I don't want to. I don't want to dilute this beautiful dark mix. And there is a sign, like a menu, back there, but I'm going to paint that separately after. I don't want to paint it as dark. So I like those things that are starting to happen in there. You know, the nice colors that are coming through. And then I'll be able to put some red. On So I will be uh, checking out uh, now. Uh, hope you enjoyed this live stream of Sherry's uh, demo. And uh, yeah, see you soon or see you next at the next live uh, YouTube. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jade. Bye-bye.